Welcome to episode 61 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week is Brian Gray. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing great. Thanks, Dave. Uh, uh, glad you're back. I think the last time you were, here, you were here with us, we were at the Jamf User Conference having some fun. And, we were. Uh, not talking about iOS in some in some respects, but we're not talking about that again. So <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> so this is uh, this week's uh, show is uh, just before uh, uh, the WWDC, which is always the exciting time for Apple. Uh, they'll be talking about a lot of that stuff, so we'll, we're going to touch upon that a little bit, and then um, we are going to uh, actually hit upon some of the new stories, and then we'll throw some Apple uh, iPhone tips and maybe some other things we're going to think about. But uh, I think we'll have some good lively discussion. Uh, this episode and I hope you enjoy it. So, uh, with that, uh, let's uh, if, you, if you want to, Brian, let's uh, dig right into the news here. Okay. Uh, the first uh, first story caught my eye was uh, Apple. Of course, uh, if hope everybody has, I shouldn't say of course. People have installed iOS uh, twelve point three that came out a little while ago. Uh, well, they actually released twelve point three point one because there were some bug fixes, mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, it should have been over, over the air update, which I think all of us you've uh, assuming have updated your device. I, I always up my update mine the, the day it comes out because I'm I try busy. to yeah, yeah. and. Um, According to Mac Rumors, we had uh, they got the information from Apple's website. Of course, is that uh, it does address a handful of bugs that are related to the Messages app and the Voice over uh, LTE calls, uh, which could so that one of the uh, fixes was it could prevent uh, making or receiving a, vo a Voice over LTE calls uh, using the Wi-Fi uh, and uh, fixing the issue in Messages that was causing messages from unknown senders <sighs> to appear in conversation list. Wow. That's true. Even though filtered unknown senders in enabled were it was enabled. Wow. So that, that, glad that's fixed. Yeah. Uh, fixed an issue that could prevent the report junk link from appearing in the messages threads for unknown senders. So that uh, did fix a couple. Yeah, you yeah, know, uh, do you get much uh, junk in iMessage? Nah, not much. Not, a, not, 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 too, not too much. There was a time early on when iMessage, like in the first couple of years, where I used to get stuff all the time. Um, and I haven't gotten anything to an iMessage, my iMessage account, in years. So they do a pretty good job of filtering if there's anything to filter out. But yeah, no, it's been uh, it's the messages app has been pretty good for the most part. In fact, I just you know I don't do too much. If, you, know, you know, you can do the messaging with with businesses, and I was yeah. um, I, I I asked reached out to um, I reached out to. Apple for some support. In fact, now see we we do the show as we go here. I think <laughs> the thing I want to talk about this is uh, family sharing. My experience with that, and that's I really if I, I completely forgot about that. I want I, I think that's going to be a topic. We can talk about that because I know about that. Yeah. So um, so uh, so I I went and uh, responded back to him because I had reached out to him, but like all of a sudden I noticed like I started getting emails. I'm like, why am I getting emails? Because like, I, I I canceled that uh, request and. We're trying to reach you. I was like, okay, but then after I remember that, oh yeah, you can go on and you actually can send um, iMessage and if, you yeah, know, if your message list. So I said, you can close this call, but of course, your advisor is waiting. It's coming in soon. I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I did the um, just to try it when business chat first went live. Um, there weren't many places that were doing it, but of course, Apple was. And I thought I would try it. And I think new iPads had just come out. So I decided to go on posing as somebody who was interested in buying a new iPad. Yeah. And um, it was a pretty good experience. I mean, I could have yeah. bought it right through iMessage and, and walked into the store and picked it up. I didn't right. go that far, but um, but it was, it was it worked really well. I haven't really had a deed for it since. I wonder, no, I haven't either. I wonder how that's doing, if it's caught on at all or... The messaging, yeah, it's hard to say. You don't, you don't, don't, don't usually hear too much about it as far as uh, them talking about it. So um, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's not really too bad uh, of a thing here as far as, uh, as, far as that goes. So, uh, I, you know, it's uh, really hard to say as far as uh, if, if it's still being used or not. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll definitely see how it goes. And, uh, and then I, I would think uh, it, uh, it should uh, – should continue to be used, I would think. Well, you know, I think one of the things they um, they uh, business chat actually plugs into existing 
systems. Yeah, that that businesses already have. So I would think it's relatively maybe easy for a business to sign up. But I honestly, it's good to have when you need it, but it's not something, yeah. you know, I do very often. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, all right. Uh, the other article kind of related to um, 12 point, uh 12.3.1 was uh, there was an article on uh, iPhone hacks and we have a link to this of course in our show notes uh, if you go to our show notes you'll find this um, iPhone hacks has uh, said that they found the improved battery life of older iPhones I said, really that is interesting so then they said late last week of course it was released and they did some testing um, on iPhone 5s 6 and 7 and seemed to have improved after that 12.3.1 update. Interesting. And, and they, they have on the website uh, some uh, a difference of a few minutes with uh, Geekbench 4 battery test results, and it looks like, uh, yeah, you're, you're getting a little better improved uh, battery capacity um, with, the, with the update. So interesting to see. And, and then their take was uh, it was a small improvement, but well, for sure it was definitely small. It's, but I, whether it was a byproduct of something else or, or Apple – specifically meant, you know, or put something in to uh, improve battery life. I can say that <clears throat> my um, my iPhone 7, I don't have it anymore. I have a, a 10R right. now. Um, right. But my iPhone 7, after I get the battery replaced through the ba- battery replacement program, mm-hmm. um, the battery life was insane. It was so good. And I don't know if it was just because I had been used to it being so bad, <laughs> but it was good. The... The 10 R I, I charged it last night for the first time in three days. So yeah. Oh, wow. Says something. Yeah. Okay. Well, of course I've, and I've talked about it before. Um, I have the, uh, the smart case on my 10 S max and I absolutely love that case. Love it. Love Is that it. the new one? Yeah. That's the one you could, Does you it could still have the hump. Oh, it still has the hump, but it does not, the hump, but it's not you see it on the camera there. But, uh, you know what? I get if I'm if I'm not a heavy if I don't use it heavily, um, I will get two days, two full days of battery. Interesting. Because right now it's sitting at uh, in fact interesting. My my iPhone XS Max is saying it's at seventy three percent the battery, but my smart case is at seventy two percent. So I wonder why it's not charging. That's interesting. Because usually your iPhone is at one hundred percent, then the smart so then and then everything runs runs off of the smart case. Yeah, kind of like uh, the AirPods do. Yeah, so that's interesting. I might have to reseat the case. Yeah, I know sure. a lot of a lot of they're pretty popular. I know at work a lot of people have um, either like yeah. Mophies or the Smart Case, and um, but I've never felt that I needed something like that. I can usually get. Yeah, the day. I'm I'm a little crazy with when it comes to uh, batteries and battery life. It's like you know what. I'd rather have it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm carrying them out on my anchor, uh, you know, 20,000 milliamp uh, uh, brick battery with me in my pocket instead. So <laughs> I'll, I'll take the case over the, the have a carrier on that little thing, that big thing, I should say. Um, so that was, uh, that was interesting. And then um, the other thing that caught our eye, and I think we could probably brought this off to a new story as well as uh, discussion is, iPod Touch. When's the last time I said that in a sentence? iPod Touch. Still easier it's to say than I t- iPhone Ten S Max. Max. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the iPod Touch had not been updated in four years, I'll, and then now Apple decided let's update the iPod Touch. It's due. So what they did. This is uh, we linked it uh, in the show notes on Apple Insider. Uh, Apple released a $199 iPod Touch with an A10 Fusion chip. Woohoo! Up to 256 wow. gigabytes of storage. It's like iPhone so it 7. Got a, it, it got a little rear bit of refresh, but I don't know if it's a big refresh. Honestly. Yeah, you know, I looked through the specs and I didn't see anything that really jumped out at me. It's kind of the MacBook Air of iOS devices where, you know, it's like they yeah. finally updated after four years and it's kind of, uh, but yeah. yeah. It's it's one of those things that it's it's it has a very very small market I would imagine because most kids get phones so young now right. that iPod touches are probably for people who want to give their six or seven year old you know access to yeah you know, right. games it's the cheapest uh, cheapest iOS device you could buy 
Yeah. Um, so the, the connectivity is still low. I mean, and, um, it's got the Bluetooth 4.1. It does have a two a two eight hundred two dot eleven AC, which is at least that's current. Still has the headphone jack. Uh, it's got good battery life. Um, but the A10 trip is based on the iPhone Seven. It is still so has a four inch screen and no four inch screen. and no uh, Touch ID. Uh, doesn't have Touch ID. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It's almost weird to look at it, and there's that old home button. It's almost. Well, like, I see that. Yeah. So they 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 pulled, They probably felt, oh yeah, I guess. Uh, why why do we need to put the Touch ID in there? Because you know, I don't want to talk about rumors, but they've been they had been rumoring that uh, that the Touch ID uh, was going to be going away. So. I hope not. I prefer Touch ID over Face ID. I'm not a fan of Face ID. Yeah, we've had this discussion. Yeah. I, I, I don't have too many problems with it. Um, there's also, you know, I'll actually link back to, look at like the article in um, for Mac Rumors. Uh, they did a really good review as well as video on it as well. And, and it looks like even the Geekbench uh, testing, is that the, the multi-core score was 6,079, 6, which is pretty good considering it being a small device. And it'll start at 32 gigs of storage. It's in most cases should be more than sufficient, especially if you have iCloud. Yeah. Uh, and if you have Apple Music too, I mean, you know, why not stream it? I mean, obviously, you, you want to download music. Uh, if you're if you're one that downloads a lot of music, maybe you want to bump it up to 128. Yeah. But the price the price does go up 100 bucks on each one. So you're 299 for uh, 299 uh, for the uh, 128 gigabyte, and then it's 399 for 256 gigabyte. Yeah, the pricing on this just blows my mind. Cause for, for a device that's that old and people want to spend that kind of money on this, I don't know. I mean, if, they, if they had um, bumped the price down for the 32 gig for 99 bucks, and then maybe had a model that was 199 that also had like Touch ID or something a little right. more to it, I mean, I'd buy one of those $99 ones for my 7-year-old in a second. Yeah. Hundred bucks for something that's oh, it's crazy. Yeah, and I think I think this this is the seventh gen uh, iPod. See, I'm so used to saying iPhone. Yeah, iPod Touch. That um, I, I think for for if we if we from what we understood if when uh, rings discuss it the WWDC the uh, it's going to be the end of the road for iOS. So and then they've ended uh, support on iPod Touches very quickly. Yeah, um, so yeah, they do. The, the sixth gen was at iOS twelve. So. I have this feeling it's going to be pushed aside when iOS 13 comes out. Well, you know, I don't know how they can release something and then a couple of months later release an upgrade to the software and not include it. Yeah. You know, that would really, that wouldn't be a good move, I would think. But I don't know what the what the projected um, requirements right. are for iOS 13. I would think it would still. Well, we don't know. I've, that's like I said. That's when we find out next week, and uh, we'll be definitely watching, uh, like we always do at our lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> for long, uh, long lunch break on, on Monday morning, uh, the, there'll be the conference on the. I believe that is what June fourth, is it not? June. Look at my the keynote's June third, I think. June third. That was, yeah. that was a day off. Well, I'm not looking at a calendar. They used to be on Tuesdays. I don't know. Yeah, but actually, I'm glad it was on Monday. I like Monday better. Yeah. And they moved it so. Um, and of course, that'll be at the. Isn't it the Steve Jobs? No, it's isn't it Steve Jobs? So, uh, yeah, I don't. It? I don't know where it is. I didn't even. I look. started looking at this stuff. I don't think the Steve Jobs Theater is big enough to hold. Yeah, no, it's it's at it's at uh, probably in uh, in San Francisco. I don't think they uh, do. Do they still do it at the Moscone Center? Yeah, I don't know. Why? Maybe we should go on their site and look. <laughs> it's so hard to find that information. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> it might be, it might be, uh, it might be tough to find it. We'll, we'll look, look and make sure we're giving you the most accurate information here. Yeah. So let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, WWC, and we're not, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the rumors more yes. and more. I, it's hard for me not to read them, and I, 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 I read them only because you have to chuckle and you still have to keep it in your mind. Yeah, it's a rumor. <laughs> I just, yeah. Everything's a rumor unless it's until it's what they used to say. It's it's always a rumor until it's pulled out of Steve's pocket. Oh, it's at the Santo, San Jose Convention Center, so it's, oh, it's wow. in San Jose this year. Yeah, they, they, they've had it in San Jose before. Yeah, I think they've had to go that big because yeah, I think yeah, right. a lot of because just a lot of a lot of people coming. Yeah, it sells out in a matter of minutes, and they're charging these developers was it three grand to do it? So, Gosh. um, so yeah, what what to expect? At WWC, let's just kind of just kind of go through some of the things here. Uh, first thing, obviously, for, it's a developers conference, as it always is every year. iOS 13, 
Mm-hmm. So that's 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 the thing that we really, really look for. A lot of discussion was dark mode. I think yeah, that's I definitely going to be a no brainer because they've yeah. already brought that in I, on Mac OS and Mojave, which you and I both love. And the OLED displays in the new phones, they it makes sense. Yeah, yeah the, the phones, uh, uh, hard to say, but uh, I mean, uh, I think they also mentioned uh, better iPad multitasking. That's potentially a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing. A lot of times in these key, in the keynotes, dude, they don't go through a lot of details um, no. as, as much as they, sh- they could. That slide up that has like all the million features, yeah. but they don't actually talk about all of them. Um, yeah. But sites are so, usually good about grabbing a shot of that slide. Yeah, I always do a, I do a screenshot of that slide that yeah. always shows, look at all these new features. And yeah, and some of them are really great, and other ones are like, you know. That's why they don't talk about it. Yeah, them, exactly. Like, well, it's like we just threw that in there to make it look like there were a lot, you know. So, um, yeah, surprising theory will probably be improved. That makes sense. I would um, hope so. <laughs> oh, they're also talking about possibly merging Find My Friends and Find My iPhone into one app. I would hmm. love that because we use Find My Friends and Find My iPhone a lot at, at my house. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that would be convenient. That's smart because it's just such a pain to have both those apps in place. So that would be um, good. So that's that's uh, iOS thirteen. Mac, Mac OS 10, 15 will be out, but this isn't a Mac show, so yeah, I don't. I, I can't expect that there's going to be a whole lot of new stuff besides the uh, yeah. Rosapan apps. Yeah, That's, yeah, oh yeah, that that the, they're potentially talking about the crossover between iOS and Mac OS um, yeah. with with developing. I I don't I don't think they're ready yet with uh, with that just yet. Um, and then the watch, watch OS six will probably more than likely come out. Yeah. Uh, of course, more watch faces. No surprise there. Um, oh, they'll actually might possibly, uh, they would have the app store on the app on the watch. That's a possibility. Interesting. Um, I, I haven't had that before. Yeah. I don't know. So maybe it's going to start. It starts. Uh, I mean, it, it's due. I, I think, you know, when the, when the watch first came out, they were really looking at the, everything should be on the iPhone. You know, you go into the watch app on the iPhone and that manages it. Cause it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard yeah. to manage it really on, on, on the watch, but I've done plenty of presentations and discussions about that watch before. And, I absolutely love my my Series Four. I think it's a great, great, great watch. Um, so that that's great to see. Um, oh, and then this happens. This is going to be awesome because I've talked about uh, recording apps on the watch. The Voice Memos app will actually be on the Apple Watch. Yeah, I've, I've I've heard that. Um, and then the Books app. Well, that's be interesting. There. Oh, audiobooks. Okay, I was going to say, how are you going to read a book on an, on the Apple Watch? Audiobooks would be great. Audiobooks that'd be great. And then you know, if you have your if you have your AirPods. Um, or if you have the Beats, uh, the new Beats earphones, which I, I those are nice, really, huh? really nice, but they're really expensive. expensive. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but they are good. And then, uh, and then probably some new health uh, related apps probably be out as well. Um, that'd be interesting to see if they in- incorporate that. But you know what? With the Apple Watch, health has always been a big thing uh, when it comes to that, uh, and uh, if that it definitely is um, something that is, is here to stay when it comes with the, with the watch. I think it's a great thing. I'm using it for tracking things for my health. Yep. Uh, my wife is using it for tracking her things for her workouts and, and all the workouts I do and my, my walking. And, and like we mentioned before with Find My Friends, you also can ha- you can be in competition with each other with the health app. And yeah, and yeah. Their steps are with each other, which is kind of fun. And so th- they've, really, they've really come a long way. So I think they're really just slowly moving toward, just like with the iPhone, how they wanted to separate it from iTunes, mm-hmm. you know, so you didn't have to plug it into your Mac. I think they were trying to separate the watch from, from having to pair up to an iPhone, have it be yeah. its own independent device. Yeah, the uh, the and also the complications. There's going to be some more complications. Of course, they'll be adding uh, to that. So that's my uh, favorite part uh, of the watch. Uses. Yeah, I, I have my my two. I have my things up on my on my display. So, you know, I got. Uh, I have the timer. I have my health. I have the stock because I have to depressingly look at the Apple stock that's dropped thirty bucks in the last Ouch. last two weeks. Ouch. Uh, but hey, you know what? I'm I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> See what Long happens. Haul. For the long haul, so um, and um, uh, yeah, and then the, the, as I mentioned, the the watch faces. There'll be so many other watch faces. I don't, I just like the infograph. I don't I don't um, I don't uh, don't go off the the hands, and I just I like I like that one the best. It's, yeah, I, I don't change my I change my I, I should just to be to mix it up. I like to mix things up a little bit. I'm surprised that Apple hasn't opened up a watch face store. 
Me too. You know, that is interesting. Because I would love to see some, and I know, you know, the Hermes or however you pronounce it, they have their own faces. Hermes, Nike, right. Nike has their own faces. Um, but imagine if like a company like Swatch, you know, yeah. made um, watch OS. Faces. That'd be cool. Or, or even Fossil. Fossil yeah. is big too. Which I think, yeah, I think Google owns Fossil now, don't they? Really? Yeah, I, I think they, they bought their watch division. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But, uh, anything else you were, 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 were it was on your wish list? You, you being like being a developer, and you've got uh, that that mindset. Yep. We, we there's both have our developer accounts, and you at least do some things. I don't do anything, and I have a developer account, which is of course I ask myself that every year while I renew it. But, oh, it's it's good to have because it's good to have because I want to be able 90, to, you know, you know, ninety nine bucks ninety nine bucks a year for it's, what you get yeah. access to. It's it's worth it if you're it's into good. it. You know. My my wish list is very short. There's okay. really two things that I want to see. I would love to see multi-user on the iPad. Yeah, I think they mentioned that yeah. multitasking. Well, multitasking, but I want I want oh, multi-user. User. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. Okay, and just because you know we have an iPad that that the kids share and I share. Sure, and, sure. You know, for instance, the other day I let my son use my iPad to make you know, stop motion videos of his Legos. And next thing I know, I'm looking at my phone and I'm getting responses from people that I never sent a message to. <laughs> and my son's right. in there texting people in my iMessage list. And oh, it was just, God. yeah, it was a disaster. So, we'll talk about family sharing in a minute that yeah. should solve that problem. But yeah, that would be good. Multi-user for an iPad. Just yeah. um, The other thing is, is messages. I would love, and every other like SMS app on Android and everything has had this for a long time yeah. and the ability to archive messages. Sure. Cause I don't want to delete them. I just want them out of my list. Right. You know, so it's either delete or yeah. Yeah, they never had an archiver. Uh, an archive yeah. So option. especially since now they have it in the cloud, when you archive, yeah. just let it sit up in the cloud and it downloads it if you need it. Or if someone sends you a message from that thread, Right, I right. would love to see. I would love to see that. I would love to see. Why aren't you, why aren't you on, their, on their developers team? Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I said why? No, I was just. I asked you why. Why aren't you on their developers team? They should be coming up with this stuff. Yeah, it's one of those things that seems so obvious. And you know, iMessage is. I don't know if you know they put so much time into really. Uh, what I think is stupid things like hand emojis, which are novelties that are fun for five minutes. When they could have used that to maybe, how hard would that be, Dave, to create, oh, exactly. uh, to archive it? How hard would that be? That, I mean, they archive other things. I mean, emails archived. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, archive messages. I mean, everybody lives in messages now. I mean, it's it'd be something like, like interesting. You know, who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us on, on Monday and something will get announced. On the top, I want to the top it. list. I want to keep an eye on when they'll, they'll that. Do and the other thing is being able to to give names to group SMS messages. I thought you'd, you can I, only I, do it with iMessages. Oh, iMessage. Yeah, message. I, with SMS because, you know, my brother has an Android phone. So anytime oh, my family sends a group message, it defaults back to SMS. Right. So, right. and now I have, you know, I would love to be able to keep track of the conversations with, you know, a title. So I would know what they were. So that's my wish list. It's not very long. It's, Actually, not very exciting, but and if if I didn't mention the iPad stuff here, I, I, I might have missed it. But if I did, my apologies if I repeat myself. I'm just going to say it anyway. It's a podcast here. Hey, we, we want to make sure I get the information to you guys. Um, better iPad multitasking. Mm -hmm. They're going to improve it by introducing a floating panel feature that gives users the ability to move Windows freely. Because it yeah, because because that is similar to how it works on Mac OS. So I, I like that. I uh, mean, you, if they do that, I that'd be do that right now with the multitasking where you have like the side apps that you could No, but it's not, it's not like a Mac window. A fine yeah. window. Yeah. And this one is interesting too. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, we got Luna display, which I have, which I love. It's the little adapter you plug into yep. your Mac and you can uh, make your iPad into a second screen. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you also have a uh, duet display, duet which is too. So the software based, um, uh, sh uh, sharing. I of course have both because I'm crazy, um, but uh, they're not terrible. That those two services are not terribly expensive. But if Apple decides to make iPad as a second display of it, and again, this is a rumor, so I'm going to I will share this one. They're saying it's a feature called Sidecar. Sidecar. I would, 
lets you yeah. use the iPad as a second display for a Mac wirelessly. So that's going to be interesting I, to see if that works. Because, I mean, like I, I said, with Luna Display, you have that little USB-C thumb drive size device that plugs into the Mac mm -hmm. that drives it. And, and, and honestly, I think Luna Display is a much more efficient uh, uh, service than Duet is. Because Duet's all pure wireless, whereas, uh, um, whereas uh, uh, Luna Display has its own little device that is yeah. the wireless, but, but it's got a dedicated device for it. So My guess is Sidecar would be limited to recent iPad Pro units. Yeah, very possible. Um, but it's, it's a great idea. It's, it's, do you remember, um, what did they call it, when Apple steals um, <laughs> ideas from smaller developers uh, with the whole Watson, Sherlock? They got Sherlocked. They got Sherlocked. <laughs> so it sounds like Duet and Luna might get Sherlocked on this. We'll see. Um, they did also mention uh, potentially improving Safari, where Safari on the iPad will now automatically load the desktop version of the site, which is that's pretty oh, that's, cool. That's long. But, but iPad for sure, I can see that. iPhone, yeah. mobile mobile version is fine. Yeah. Um, and they also mentioned here too is uh, they finally um, a new the new volume HUD. Finally, Apple's going to replace the annoying volume overlay with something that is less distracting. That's that's something I'm really looking forward to. That's 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 the number one thing for me is the new volume HUD. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was that important, but it's, that's special. This one's important: the new Reminders app. Um, yes. I'm hoping that that happens. Uh, the, the, that they've they're rewriting it from the ground up. It's over. It's way overdue. Yeah, you know, I use the Reminders app a lot for mm -hmm. my own to do list, and then I have a uh, my wife and I use Things to uh, the app Things to uh, things. keep all our it's yeah. It's good app actually. Oh, I love that app. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so we use that for our common stuff, but my own personal stuff, I've always used the Reminders app, and it works really well. So any any additions to that would be great. Yeah. So, um, anything else you got? Uh, I think we're. I think we pretty much covered what we can. Um, next week's show, we'll have uh, a post WWDC, so you get to actually hear about what actually was talked about and released. So, um, it, it, it's a shot in the dark if if they do announce a new iPhone. I doubt it. Yeah. Generally, they, then that's never happened in the Worldwide Developers Conference. Um, I think they Apple usually likes to save it for an event in September mm -hmm. um, to to talk about uh, iPhone. I doubt any iPads will be coming out anytime soon. Yeah. I think the iPad line has been pretty solid uh, with uh, the the sixth gen uh, just coming out not too long ago, and then the and then you have the iPad Air uh, that's come out and the new Mini, which was great. Yeah. Uh, so I think the iPad iPad line is solid right now. I think really iPhone line solid too. I mean, I mean for now, I mean the XS Max, the XS, and the uh, XR. Uh, are, are definitely uh, 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 definitely something uh, that uh, is uh, is uh, is good. I think it's the good. only piece of hardware that people are really going to be expecting to see is the new Mac Pro, yeah. and Apple might be in a little bit of trouble if if they can't produce something. The guy just something. a sneak peek. You know, here's a short video of Johnny and I talking about how great it is. You know, but they need to say something. I think it's been too long. Yeah. Well, earlier in this year, the services was the focus. Now we've got developers, and then then we'll have uh, more stuff uh, going on later too. So, mm -hmm. so I have two. Ex I've just thought of something else I need to talk about too. Is I it's hard to remember when you talk where you talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it here too. Is is my uh, my family sharing experience, and then my experience helping family get new iPhones. That's going to be a good story coming up. That sounds uh, like a sad story. It, yeah. <laughs> so my first experience. So I've talked about this many times over the years, and I've talked about it on here. I believe on the show here uh, about family sharing and about keeping your iCloud account separate. So for years, I mean, I'm, I mean, I've been an iPhone user since going back, just like you. You, you had the first iPhone, didn't I you? I did first day. Yeah. So I did not have the first iPhone, but I had every phone iPhone after that. Uh, so I wasn't that crazy to fork out six hundred. Was it no eight hundred bucks for uh, for an iPhone? So uh, the, uh, the but one of the things I was uh, what I was trying to do is you know it's it's such a it's such a pain. He still has it. He's, he's showing his iPhone it's my first original iPhone. iPhone, and that, that thing's like a paperweight now. Yeah, feels good though. Uh, still, it uh, so um, uh, so my family the family sharing. Uh, 
I was I was on board with the family sharing, but I I I avoided it. So really, what I did and the reason why I bring back history, um, I had a purchasing account. I have a purchasing account, and I use and I has I have one email account that's assigned to my purchasing account, and that purchasing account buys all my movies, all my apps. So it's all assigned to my iTunes account and my app store account. So had that for years. So then, as you mentioned earlier about getting your messages on your iPad because it's sharing because you guys are using the same Apple ID for everything. And that's where it got really irritating. It's like, that's right. I'm done. That's it. So what I did was I created an iCloud account for myself and I created an iCloud account for my wife. And so she had her her contacts and all her information, her texts, everything was backed up on her iCloud account. Mm-hmm. And then my, uh, my iCloud account was set for my stuff. And then, but of course I was crazy because I was always afraid to, to, to mess around f- uh, family sharing when family sharing came out because what happens is, is uh, I, I worry that uh, something's going to happen. So I didn't want to do it. So she had her own iCloud uh, space and I had my own iCloud space. So I'm just, I think, and then after a while, just recently within the last uh, week, this happened a couple weeks ago, uh, probably a week ago actually, I think about it, um, I decided that, uh, you know, why am I spending all this money on the extra storage for iCloud? Isn't that silly? Mm-hmm. So what I do, I decided, all right, let's, get, let's, let's, let's take the dive. Let's see what happens and let's put it in family sharing. So that's what I did. So but your I, storage, your iCloud storage, you you shared. So my but my iCloud storage is on my iCloud account, not on my G, my my not my purchasing account. Oh, okay. So that's the problem. So I was paying for my services on my iCloud account for just iCloud, but not for purchases. So I would be signed into two IDs in order to get access to it. So so what do you do? Okay, well I made my iCloud account as the primary. And then what I did was I put my, my, my purchasing account as a family member. So that account's a family member now, of course, and now I can share all the apps with being signed in just to that. And then I add my wife to the family sharing. So now she has access to the, the, iCloud, uh, the iCloud storage. Now I had the 200 gig plan. She had the 50 gig plan. Mm-hmm. So if you do that, then the other plan goes away. And that's what happened, which is great. But of course, you know, like you, I have a .Mac account. I want, I want my... Mac.com yes. account to be the primary because that's the baby. It has, mm-hmm. you know, and I even I made that comment when I was at the Apple store. The status uh, symbol. You, you got to have that. And I, in fact, I should just start using it more and get rid of my Gmail account. <laughs> because that's yeah. Mac.com. It's hey, hey yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. Um, I mean, it all, it, all, it all leads up to iCloud.com anyway. But um, and of course, the dreaded iTools. Oh, me. Yeah, got, yeah, I've got me, that too. We've got all three of those. Yeah, you know, I've got so. all of them. My wife does uh, too. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, well, why, I want, I want it to be on my purchasing account because why do I have to pay twice here? And plus I put a lot of store credit on my, on my app, my app account because yeah. I don't want to have to, uh, that's a good way to, because you buy those cheap iTunes cards for, uh, you get a uh, hundred dollars for 80. Yeah. So try to contact Apple, forget it. There's no way you're going to be able to do it. No. You, you can't merge it. So I just, you know what? I gave up. I just put some iTunes credit on the, uh, the I- iCloud account, and that's covered for the iCloud for a while because it's you know it's two ninety nine a month for for the two hundred gig plan, mm-hmm. which is more than enough for both of us, uh, me and the wife. And then uh, the, the the purchasing account lives along with it being a family member. So that was my story. There you go. You know, oh, we- it's funny you mentioned the Mac dot com because I realized that in January my Mac dot com email address is going to be twenty years old. Yeah, well, mine's up there too. It's yeah. got to be close. Because it was the day that Steve Jobs announced iTools. Wow. And iDisk was a 10 megabyte, 10 <laughs> megabytes. <laughs> like the dot, yeah, there was the, the, the mobile me and the, the dot then, Mac. Yeah, then it went to mobile or dot Mac and then it went to mobile me and then it went to iCloud. And yeah. Yeah. But it's all the same. I've got, I've got about, yeah, 20, 20 years of emails and, no. All that other stuff in there. So, so uh, really, in closing, about that story is, um, I, and then, and just I wanted to share that with the audience. Uh, just uh, using the, the family sharing account is smart, but I definitely highly recommend that you, st- you still keep separate iCloud accounts for each of your family members, as that with their own Apple IDs. Yeah, we and we just, just keep the primary. Your primary it should be your purchasing account, 
and your your family members should lead up lead up into that account yeah. and then each person has their own app ID. I have a, a confession to make that um, we all have separate um, iCloud accounts. Um, yep. Apple IDs too. Apple IDs, yeah. And I actually, <laughs> for my for my two youngest kids, because my oldest is he's out on his own, but the two my two youngest kids when they were born, I I created Apple IDs for them. <laughs> so they've actually had their Apple IDs for a long time. Yeah. So there we, you go. We it's it's kind of like one. A- so it's, it is, it's, it's good to have no one mingles their stuff. I'm the master on our family plan. Like my account is the master and then, you know, my wife is on it and then the two kids are on it. So. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's how it should be. Screen time is really, really good for that because I can actually really monitor what's on my son. Well, yeah, because you have your own, you have young kids. Yeah, um, that uh, you want to be able to monitor that stuff. Yeah, you know, me, no kids, so I don't have to do that. Any of those things. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, something uh, definitely. I uh, was uh, it was a good experience and a bad experience, but a good experience. I'm glad I did it and it's over with. Now I'm not paying for extra iCloud storage anymore. <laughs> there you go. And we're covered and we're good. Um, and. People spend the money on iCloud storage. It's worth it. Oh, I'm I'm tired of having that conversation. Uh, all the time. Like, all but the time. I want my pictures. I'm like, okay, if you want your pictures, <laughs> buy ninety nine cents. Make month, it. Please. And, I, and then, granted, I'm month. never thrilled. Apple should be giving away fifty gigs, but that's just me. Even if it was fifteen, you know, even, even if it was fifteen or twenty. I mean, I, I yeah. mean, Google gives away fifteen gigs right off the bat for yeah. for Gmail accounts. I mean, why? I mean, at least that much. I mean, like I, you think they were doing it, but the two hundred gig plan I think is a good sweet spot. It's They're not, making so much money off those fifteen oh, gig plans. Course. I mean, everybody does. I mean, Microsoft does with OneDrive. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dropbox is making big money on their their storage. Yeah, Box and that. I mean, it, it's like. It's like a service. It's like the Apple's yes. doing with all the other stuff. With well, their this is how they're they're making up for for dwindling iPhone sales. Yeah, yeah. Pure, services. Pure saturation. You know, they've got to go the services route. Yep, and yeah. makes total sense. It does. So, so uh, next the uh, next discussion I wanted to do is a topic: uh, upgrading your iPhones. Um, family members, we love family members, don't we? And we love helping them because we are your the tech support for family, aren't we? We are. I'm, I'm sure you, you are. They have but, iPhones because you want them to have iMessage. So that too. That's, that's uh, that is very important. Well, my family, you have father, father, mom, and uh, and sister. They decide, hey, it's due. We're due to uh, do an upgrade uh, to our phones, and I'm also fed up with AT and T, which I've said on this show many times. And I was very happy when I switched to T-Mobile. I've been very happy with T-Mobile. Um, they, uh, in fact, uh, with T-Mobile, I just uh, turned one year in June. I'll be with uh, T-Mobile one year, and they made me put a deposit on one of the phones. And they, uh, I called, I asked early, I said, "Hey, can you guys give me that money back? Because it's, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have that deposit. I have great credit. Uh, so because we have seven phones on our on our phone. uh, so they gave it back. I got my two hundred fifty dollars back, and uh, I'm happy. And uh, and all the other perks that T-Mobile gives that I've uh, that I've talked about before, Netflix and. Um, yeah, did you hear though that they're they're um that uh they're changing the plans? They're gonna call it magenta and that that this isn't a rumor, this is true. I think it's in mm-hmm. July and mm-hmm. our free Netflix accounts are gonna drop down to standard definition. Well it always has. Mine standard the only the only pay for standard definition, I pay an extra three dollars a month for each. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It, but, it yeah, that's always been to me like they were talking about the actual plan on your TV. Yeah, this is for Netflix. Mine's not standard definition. My Netflix. Well, no, my Netflix is HD. Yeah. They give the they pay they're paying Netflix for me through my T Mobile bill. Mm-hmm. So they pay the credit they give you, and then I pay, and then I pay them an extra three dollars a month to cover it to being HD. Okay, so that's how I work. So I think most people do that. I'm confused because I don't. And I get I get HD. So yeah, you might, might want to check that. Well, we could talk uh, talk offline about yeah. that, but but yeah, that's what that, I know that for a fact because I look at my bill every month very closely. <laughs> oh, I do too. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, and I'm, I was not surprised about my father wanting to switch. My my family. I mean, I asked them how much how much how much data do you think you use in a month, and and they uh, they asked AT and T this, and 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 they said they use one point five uh, 
gigabytes of data between three of them per month. Can you imagine that? Impossible. I wouldn't be, I, I, there's no way in my right mind. I, I'd probably use that in a day. How much do you use a month? I mean, between all of our phones, I mean. No, just they, you. Yeah. Just you. Oh, just me? Uh, I probably average four to five. Yeah, that's maybe about what I do. Three to five, maybe, depending. But most of the time, I'm, we're on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, so you got to decide. You got to. I gotta have to help them decide. You know what's the best way to go about this. Um, so they were both. There were th- um, three phones. There was an iPhone five involved. And there was an iPhone five S and another iPhone five S. So pretty old equipment. And they they got their money's worth out of it because they bought them like six years ago when they first came out. Uh, so they can't complain. They got good money from it. Um, so. Uh, First thing I just I, I wanted to say is you know may, maybe we maybe it's just best to go to Apple because I don't know Apple should be able to handle the transferring of of a, of a carrier you I would have thought so we go over to the okay. Apple store and then of course the the guy at the Apple store tells us oh no uh, you'll probably get a better deal at T-Mobile you probably should go over there and so he's like telling us not to buy the phones at Apple <laughs> and well, I'm not on commission we, you know we, we we you're probably better off to go to T-Mobile I'm like all right fine. And then I started thinking about it. I said, okay, maybe it is a better idea to deal with the carrier because they can handle all the logistics of getting the phone numbers ported over and all that stuff. So we go over there and then we look and I, and I start looking at uh, the phones. And of course, you know, this, all the carriers, let's face it, they all stink. Yeah. They want, they want you to, they want you to uh, buy their service plan. Oh yeah, it's only three dollars a month for their service plan, and yeah, we take care of accidental breakage and all this other stuff. Sure. And I say to the guy, why do I want to do that when I just spend the the cost of Apple Care and Apple, Apple Care will cover it? Yeah, and I and I'm not going to worry about losing the phone or getting stolen. I mean, that that's the risk you take. Yeah. I don't want to pay for your service. So I, I find after a while he's going on, going on and on about it. I'm like, you know what? Here's what I want to do. Why don't you get us SIM cards? I want you to, do, to port all three phone numbers over, give us the SIM cards, and then uh, we'll go back over to Apple and we'll just buy the phones there. Because mm-hmm. it's always a better experience at the Apple store as it is anyway because they'll help set up the phone yep. and you're dealing with something that works for Apple and they're very good at that stuff, usually. Usually. Um, so, so it was kind of strange. So I said to my, my family, I said, okay, family, you're going to have to, uh, your phone will be dead for a little while because, of course, this, I don't want to be futzing around with their phones because, of course, all three of their phones are still locked to AT and T, so I am not going to spend time. And you, I don't think I have already hit, hit a sore subject with you with your iPad. Oh, so yeah, don't even go there. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that was so I said, you know what, family, just leave them locked and let's just deal with it and don't don't even bother. And let's just go to the Apple. We'll take the cards, get the account set up. Of course, I got a nice fifty dollar finder's fee because they they give uh, they give uh, uh, they give uh, money for transferring uh, uh, helping helping uh, you recommending uh, uh, a friend or family do they really i didn't know that yeah yeah so I'll be, hopefully my, my 50 dollar gift card will be coming soon here my visa gift card uh so um so we go back over to apple and of course apple's app, at the apple store it's a great experience and, and i expect it to be um we, we got a really good gal there um and she was really really uh, patient working with us because you know my family they don't know anything in technology and i had to Help them get everything straightened over and get everything booked up. And none of them had iCloud. <laughs> so I said, Dad, just get a 200 gig plan. You're paying three bucks a month. All three of you will be on it and you'll be fine. Now you're, all your photos are in your backed up and then we can just restore everything. Mm-hmm. It'll be just a piece of cake. And of course, n- none of them had anything on it. So th- I, I, we ran the backup for the first time. Everything backed up in like five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, including all the settings on their phone. So, uh, so I said, okay, guys, all you need is the 10R. That's all you need. Don't, don't waste your time. The 10R is a perfectly good phone for you guys. You, don't, you barely use the thing and no, no reason to go. What colors do you want? Um, my, my mom, black. My sister, black. And they all you know, they live together. So, all right. So neither one of you are going to know which phone yeah. is which. <laughs> so, okay, fine. Then my dad, he decides, oh, I want uh, the 10S. That's good. I know they don't listen, so I can give the details. And I said, Dad, what do you need the 10S for? Really? I mean, okay, it's your money. If you want to do it, that's fine. So he got the 10S. And like, okay, that's fine. So, of course, the setup process is awesome. You take the old phone, put it next to the new phone. You automatically seize that. it. Yeah. Transfers all the settings over. You just put your passwords in. Bada boom, you're done. So the whole process was, was, was great. And at first, Apple was like, I don't know if we can do this because those SIM cards weren't weren't purchased here. I don't know if we can do this. I'm like, what are you kidding me? What? 
give me a break. So they were able to figure it out, and they finally they put the, the Sims in, and, and then it worked. So the Sims are already activated. So it's, I mean, just the, the phones were unlocked, and you don't. I mean, and that's the other thing too. If you would have bought the phones from T-Mobile, the phones would be locked. Yeah. Um. So uh, that that was that was one of the one of the good things as well. So uh, anyway, long story short, everything worked out great. Uh, they're very happy. Um, they've got nice fast phones now because those 5S uh, phones were brutal. The battery life brutal. Yeah. And uh, anything you want to add on that? I mean, with any of your experiences with that kind of stuff? No, you know, um, upgrading your phone is kind of, um, it's, it's one of the easiest things to do, I think. I, I upgraded from a 7 to a 10R yep. earlier this year, and it was, I was in and out of there. It was, uh, it was a pretty good experience. It really is. And I, I think Apple's made it um, pretty um, Pretty flawless when it comes to uh, comes to stuff, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I was very impressed with uh, very impressed with uh, how the whole process went. And, and if you if you do the iPhone upgrade program, it's even easier. And and that's what he did. Yeah, and all three of their phones are on the on the iPhone app. We were playing. My plan's ready in September, so I've got it timed perfectly. Yeah, there you <laughs> so go. So I, I go trade mine in and be ready to to get the next phone and and. And everybody shakes their head, and why do you do that every year? Um, I'm just curious to know. You know, the wife's phone is to do is she, that her phone should be paid off. She has the iPhone eight uh, eight plus. Um, after 24 months, do they still let you trade it in? I would think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but the only thing, oh yeah, the other thing I mentioned, I, I said, well, why don't you just trade in those five, the five and five S, and they, they'll just they'll just recycle for you. They gave them 35 bucks for each phone. Yeah. For for an iPhone 5S, a phone that's six years old. So, so the dad, my dad should have been happy. He got, then he just got back another, you know, uh, what, almost a hundred bucks. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I'm trying for, to think when um, I got my, when I upgraded my son's 5S, of course this was probably about a year and a half, maybe even two years ago. I think they gave me like a hundred bucks or something for it. So, so, so yeah, it's definitely worth it to trade it in. So, uh, all right, so the, the, you got two great stories from, from me today <laughs> of, of my experiences. You, uh, hopefully, they do find of some, of, of some value. And, uh, and uh, Brian, uh, thank you for all your input with that as well. Uh, moving on, there's a couple of tips I threw, I threw in, in our notes here, Brian, and then I, I figured you, you know how to do both of these. You see it in our notes. Um, the first one is how to make a bookmark folder in Safari on the iPhone or iPad. You know how to do that? God, you know, I do, but it's probably been so long since I've done it because they usually just sync from my Mac. But I know there are a lot of people who don't have Macs and they just have iPads and that's their computer. So it would be good for them to know that. It would. Um, and I've I've actually sent you a link there. I've got the link, of, of course, uh, to, to see that. And uh, the way you do it is uh, actually you, you, you go on the bookmarks page and then you tap edit. And then you tap a new folder to create a new Safari bookmark folder. Um, so then now under bookmarks, you will see that it now has a folder. Like uh, let's say you want to have, uh, you have like recipes that you want to have bookmarks for specifics uh, that you look up for, let's say you're cooking. You want to be able to get to them very quickly under a folder instead of having to navigate through all your list of bookmarks. And you're right. Bookmarks do sync with the Mac, with uh, with uh, your Mac as well mm -hmm. through Safari, so that does help. Uh, but uh, this is a nice way to being able to do this. And you can edit the folder and name it whatever you'd like uh, and, and go through. And uh, it's very easy, and it works both on iPhone and iPad. Uh, and, uh yeah, and you can reorder them if you want. I mean, because you know how you can take the the the, the bread box lines and drag it yep. up and down and bring it up uh, where you ever you want wherever you want. Yep. Um. And uh, yeah, no, it's 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 a great tip in understanding how to do that. And then uh, when you go into into the uh, in the uh, share sheet, when you want to uh, add the bookmark, then now you can navigate right to that location. Yep. And uh, add that right into the folder. Very simple, very easy. Um, this one you should know. The, the second one we had here. Uh, if you could see that one. Oh yes. I think you can. You think you can handle that one? I, I'll let you. I. I don't know. That's that's tough stuff. I mean, I think <laughs> um, you know to organize. Uh, it's organizing your uh, your home screen. 
you know, how to put yeah. apps and make folders. Uh, Sorry, I put, I put you on a spot here. I wanted yeah. to, I'm challenging you on some iPhone tips here. <laughs> now, it, I guess it, it, does it depend on the model you have now? Does touch ID? No, uh, no, it shouldn't. Oh, well, I mean, I guess if it has touch ID, it gets a little or trickier. Or force touch, uh, whatever the yeah. touch 3D or what, what do they call it? Uh, it's a 3D touch. 3D touch, that's what it is. Sorry. Yes. Um, really, you just press and hold on a icon until it starts jiggling around, and you're going to see there's a, a, a white circle with an X in it that appears in the upper left corner. You just take yep. your finger and you just drag it. Now, the home screen on iOS devices kind of has a, um, a auto-arrange type of right. thing. So if you drag an icon to the left, the icon that's on the left will slide to the right. So it's almost yeah. like those old puzzles where you kind of had to move the number around and get the numbers in order, you know? Yeah. So that's really all there is. Now, if you want to create a folder, then you would just drag one icon on top of the other, right. and it'll create a folder, and it'll prompt you, not really prompt you, but you'll be able to type a name in for that folder, Yep. Or iOS will give it a smart name. Say if it's you're dragging Microsoft Word onto Pages, you might get a folder that's automatically titled Productivity, for instance. Right. Um, or if you're dragging a photo app onto another photo app, it might say, you know, photography or photos or something like that. Um, and on the iPad, and I think you can do this on the iPhone as well. If you start dragging one of the icons and then touch any of the other icons, they'll kind of all group together so you can move multiple icons at once. Right. So thanks you for putting it. me on the spot, Dave. You figured it out. I knew you would. There you go. <laughs> I should get a job so, doing this. <laughs> I think we answer these questions pretty much every day with our, uh, our, oh, our, our, all day, our, every day. our IT professionals. Yeah. And they always are coming to us asking questions. How Why isn't our phones working? And uh, how do you do this? Oh, always the good one. The good one today was uh, my my Outlook is really slow because our company uses Outlook, of course, and many companies do. Uh, and uh, he, uh, it was just slow. It just kept loading slowly. I said, okay, check this. Can I check settings? And uh, maybe this will help you. Or maybe this. I'll do a hard reset of your phone. I've talked. About, I've I mentioned that many times. Uh, but all else fails. Uninstall the app. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and sure enough. It worked. <laughs> there you go. When when there's a there's a bonus tip for today's episode. Whenever all else fails, if an app doesn't behave the way it's supposed to, delete it completely from your iPhone or your iPad. Go to the App Store, download it back down. You know, with Be PCs nice. and Macs, it's always reboot. With the yeah. rest of it, that's that's our answer. The app to reboot, install it. <laughs> yeah. Did you turn it on and off again like an IT crowd? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, it works. Uh so. There's your bonus tip right there. <laughs> so um, a couple of app picks. I, I don't know if you had an app pick or if you am I putting on a spot on this one. If not, I, we can just talk about this one that I put go, in here. Go ahead. I'm going to kind of look around um, my home screen here. The reason why I picked this app is, um, is GarageBand. And GarageBand for iPad is unbelievable. Yes. I, I, have you used it before? Yes. On, on, on the iPad? Holy cow. Fantastic. I, I got another experience. I can kind of, I'll be short with this one. Um, today at Apple, which is the greatest uh, things in the world that Apple has done. You can go to the Apple store and be able to learn anything you want in a, in a 30 minute session. And I looked out last, uh, this past Sunday, uh, where as um, I um, got to the store and I was the only person that signed up for the, for the session. <laughs> so that was great. I got a one-on-one -on -one session on how to use GarageBand. So, uh, I, I find it to be just amazing being a music machine. I learned a lot um, from um, from using it. Uh, being able to add things here. So here, I, I got a song here I can play. Putting hip, hip drum machine and uh, hard rock, uh, a, a hard rock uh, uh, guitar and uh, and drums and being able to go through and it just it's just amazing what you can do with it. Um, highly recommend checking it out. Uh, it's free, right? You can spend, it's absolutely free. Yeah. So this, yeah. this app is free. And I know. <laughs> even even when, I, when, I, when I press a chord, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. It is um, it is an incredible time suck, too. because I, It is. I could sit here for hours playing with this. Oh, my I mean, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I start playing with this, and it's three days later, and I realize maybe I should put it. Here, here's a little acoustic guitar here, so I wasn't hard rocking everybody. And I'm going to do... 
I'm just I'm just typing the chords, and I'm I'm no mu- musician by any means. This sounds pretty good. <laughs> you know, it it does. And the um, I've actually created ringtones. Yeah, like that's ringtones. that's something we talked about. Yeah, creating uh, ringtones. Uh, very easy. You can bring all these uh, bring all these uh, uh, different instruments in play. Uh, your voice, you can speak. Yep. Um, I use it to edit this podcast. I mean, I use the Mac version of of GarageBand uh, to edit this podcast. Um, and uh, I've, I've been, that's why I wanted to go is I really wanted to learn more. But I also want to learn, see, who knows, I could come up maybe with a new theme song or some or different music I might want to be creative with. And, um, you know, you never know. But so j- j- Apple GarageBand, who knew? It's, uh, it's, it's free. Get it on your iPad. It also it's available on the iPhone. And in fact, I put it on my, my tennis max. It's pretty gosh darn good on the tennis max. I'm able to, uh, I'm able to go uh, and uh, do the, do the editing on there very easily uh, on my iPhone. Um, so it, it, it can be a podcast studio for you. It, it, it's just an endless thing with, with sound and music and being creative and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's really, it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a great app and it's free. Let's see. So, if you don't have anything, that's okay. No, actually, I do. Um, and I don't really think of this as an app because I don't use it all the time. But do you have any font? Yes. Any font is great for if you use a lot of writing apps um, on iOS, whether it's, uh, you know, like you're using something like uh, Ulysses or Drafts or one of those apps where you can actually install custom, um, custom fonts. Mm-hmm. The uh, any font app will actually let you select multiple fonts right. and put them into configuration um, profiles that will load under profiles and they'll be available to uh, those fonts will be available to all of your apps. So I have a bunch of fonts stored in my iCloud drive. <laughs> okay. And when I get a new um, phone or an iPad or something, I just go and, and create those configuration yeah. profiles and I've got all my fonts there. So any font, I think it's, I think it's free. It is. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got that. Uh, it works great. I mean, you have it on your iPhone or your iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I, uh, yeah, I, I've got that too. That's a great. App. We'll have, we'll definitely have a link to both of our apps in the show notes. Um, and uh, definitely I'll also link to today at Apple. You definitely should check out the session on GarageBand. I think, uh, in any sessions. I really. might take my kids to that. I think they'd like that. You should. You yeah. should. And they're only half hour sessions, so they're not uh, they're not terribly bad. You just and, and you can make I I talked about this in on previous shows. It's just go in the app the, the app the the uh, Apple store app and uh, just reserve. You just look to see what's available and so something of your interest is there. And uh, I was interested in there was some actually sessions on podcasting and um but of course, it was down at the downtown Michigan Avenue store in Chicago, and that can be very challenging to get down to. So, <laughs> I was bummer I missed them. But you know, they'll, they'll have other sessions. But even the local store has tons of great sessions, and I think Apple's done a great job. And I've talked about that before. So, uh, before we wrap things up, I wanted to mention Mac stock. I wish you could come to Mac stock, Brian. I wish it, I could it, too. It, it's, it's. I heard Dave I speaking there. I am speaking there. for the fifth year. Fifth year, fifth year, and uh, I've talked about this uh, many times, and I wanted to check out a lot of, a lot of great things happen at MacStock. We've got uh, all kinds of great speakers, including myself, Allison Sheridan, Chuck, Chuck Joyner, uh, Mike Schmitz, um, talking about everything there is to do with Apple and iPhone, I- iOS. Um, David Sparks and uh, and and company is going to be there for the Mac Power users. So he's going to record the 500th episode of Mac Power users, which is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm sure that alone, Brian, you're going to miss that. I know. God. <laughs> uh, uh, and just endless amounts of speakers. Uh, uh, we also put together this year a uh, the Mac Stock uh, Film Festival. Wally Trzinski, who's a, a amazing videographer, um, he's uh, based in Canada. He's he's a uh, uh, coordinating a uh, a, a video uh, video uh, t- uh, check where you actually can submit a video and be able to uh, we can get, be able to watch it and it's re- it's really a great time and there's so many other great speakers I can go on and on but uh, I want you to check it out um, it's uh, if you go to maxstock 2019com and if you use the uh, if you use the offer code in touch you get seventy dollars off of the regular price of twenty forty nine dollars seventy dollars 
we give you a great deal. Yeah, that is and, a good uh, deal. So you're going to have to talk to the wife. Maybe you could come, Brian. You don't know. It's, when is uh, it again? It is uh, July 27th and 28th. Um, I'm up on in vacation. Woodstock, Illinois. Yeah, yeah and, and that's right. You have vacation. That's the, and that's the hard part about our, our the conference. A lot of people take vacation. July is a tough time. month, yeah. It's tough for, for a lot of people. But I'll have to plan there are a lot accordingly of next year. Plan, plan maybe maybe we can get you to come on next year. But uh, uh, please come uh, check it out. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great conference. And, uh, and again, use, use the offer code InTouch at checkout, and you could save $70 off the regular price of uh, uh, of the conference. And the, the links will be in the show notes. We really appreciate that. Brian, really appreciate you being here today. It I think we had a lot a of fun. to be here, Dave. Thanks for asking me back. Yeah, this was a lot of fun and uh, a little different than we were sitting and squeezed next together at a hotel room. <laughs> yes. To being yes, over I have our, a lot more space here. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot more space and uh, I'll know next time not to do that and find a, a table of some sort. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was It was. It was fun. That was our first, for your, your first experience doing a podcast. Wasn't yeah. It? That, yep. This is not your second. So, uh, uh, so I really appreciate that. And if you need to get a hold of Brian, you can uh, you reach out to me, and I will we'll definitely uh, I'll definitely pass on any information if you want to ask uh, anything about Brian, unless you want to share anything else, Brian. Uh, no, I think that's uh, that's it for me. All right, um, let me uh, uh, bring up the notes. We'll close out the show here, and that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at intouchwithios.com where all the links to all the places to listen are there. I'm Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Again, Brian, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Dave. And uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.